Hey everybody, thanks for clicking that thumbnail and welcome to Talking Habs. And in this video, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be filming, not filming, well, I'm filming this. I'm gonna be recording a uh, segment for my uh, podcast called A Couple of Guys Talking Habs. And as you can tell, it's not a couple of guys here, it's just me. Uh, but yeah, my regular podcast partner, Jeff's unavailable at the moment, and I've got some stuff to talk about. So I thought I'd um, make it interesting, and I put it out for um, the podcast, and as well for a lot of you v viewers who don't know that I have a podcast. And uh, yeah, you get a taste of uh, one segment of the podcast, and hopefully you'll want to go and uh, listen to the rest. You can find it on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, and a bunch of other places. And you can also find it at anchor.com. And if you go there onto the site, you can actually leave a voice message. So, and we'll talk about whatever you, your message is on the next podcast. So I encourage you to do that. So that's a couple of guys talking Habs. And um, yeah, so I'm going to get into that. I'm going to, when I start recording you'll hear what I'm going to be talking about. So um, if it seems a little weird, um, it's because I'm recording a podcast at the same time. So you're going to see it on YouTube, this one segment, and the rest will be on the actual audio podcast. Let's get right into it. Um, I guess before I do that, I'm going to ask you guys watching on video, uh, if you are new to the channel, you're a Habs fan like I am, and you want to see more Habs videos, please subscribe and ring that notifications bell, which is right down there somewhere, and uh, that'll get you your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talking Habs. You can leave any comments you may have about this video and about the subjects that I'm going to be talking about uh, in the comment section, and give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Let's get right into it. I'm going to click on record, and um, yeah, you get a bit of a back scene, um, back scenes look at what it's like to record a podcast, I guess. So there's my big microphone. Uh, that's not what you guys on the video are hearing it on, but that's the recording, the microphone for my podcast. And let's get right into it before I bo bore you guys too much. So here we go. I'm going to uh, press record now, and I'm going to be recording my podcast. All right. All right, everybody. So we're back from the break, and um, a little bit different... Um, in what I was planning to do, so I recorded the first segment of this podcast the um, day of, I think, or the day before. I, I, I don't even remember now. Um, the day of, no, I think it was the day before uh, the Winnipeg game, the second one. Um, so all my opinions in that first segment come from before that, and I'm going to give you a little bit more of that um, after the game. So right now we are the second day after the second Winnipeg game, the 2-1 to one loss. Uh, in overtime, um, everybody's kind of shitting on the team. Um, and yeah, I'm going to give you my responses to that. Um, I want to talk about bandwagon jumpers, referees, the Subban Weber trade. Believe it or not, people are still talking about that. I'm going to give you my opinion on that. Um, I want to talk about Jake Allen for a sec. I'm going to talk about Carey Price, of course. Can't not talk about Carey Price. Plus, there's also today... A lot of rumor, again, about Jack Eichel. I've done a video about this already. Um, I've got a little bit more to say about it, and I'm going to do that. Plus, special treat for um, for you, old man, and now he knows who he is. <laughs> I've got a little short poem that I wanted to read on the last live stream, and quite frankly, with the excitement that was in the room, and there was a lot of um, comments, and I just didn't get around to it. So I'm going to read it now while it's still kind of... <laughs> It's, it has to do with what's going on right now. Um, and at the very end, I'm going to read some questions and a little question and answer because I've got a video series, but I'm not getting enough questions. Hopefully this will kick off some more questions. So if you have any questions and you're listening on the podcast, I think, I mean, you can just go leave a voice message. I'd love that if you leave a voice message on anchor.com on our podcast site, and we'll answer that on the next podcast. And you guys on the video, because uh, you guys on the podcast, I'm also filming this for my channel, just this segment. And you can check that out on my YouTube channel, Talking Habs. And um, yeah, so um, 
we're going to get right to it. So, uh, yeah, you guys here on the video, that's what I wanted to say. You can leave a comment in the comment section. Hopefully ask me a question and it'll be in the next, uh, what do I call that now? Uh, a question and highly answering uh, series. So I could use some more questions from the audience and from the viewers. And uh, yeah, let's uh, hopefully we'll get more of that. So we're going to do that. So those are the things that are going to happen in this segment. Hopefully it won't be too long. You never know when I'm recording and when I'm talkative. So <laughs> we're going to get right into it. I'm going to start with this right now. I'm mad. Yeah, I'm mad that so many people that call themselves Habs fans... Just can't wait to shit all over everyone associated with the team. How the... I don't know if I want to swear here, but... Yeah, how the fuck can you be so wishy-washy if you can't see what they're trying to do right now with the coaching change and all that? Then, uh, well, then, I don't know. Like, give, give up on being a Habs fan? I don't know. Give them at least a few games to start, you know? Like, they just changed the coach. He's got two games in... And everyone wants him gone already. He hasn't had a chance to do anything, literally. Very little. And in the second game, they looked a lot better. So it's encouraging. Yet, still, they lost the game. So it's the end of the world. Uh, they just... They gotta give them, I didn't finish the sentence even. Got to give them a few games to start turning things around. He's doing that. He's working with the players. There's no time for practice. They hired him. They made the change after the break where they had seven game days, I mean, to work on things for a new coach. And they decided, ah, I think that was a bad decision personally. They should have done it then. They decided, well, let's see if they can do something in the uh, Julian and Muller in these seven days. And no, they didn't do anything. And now you got a new coach who has zero practice time, pretty much. You get a game in, like, they had two games, uh, two days off in between those last two games. But that's a rarity. They're not, they're not going to get a lot of days off in between games uh, right up until um, the last two games of the season against Toronto. There's a three-day break there. So that's it. But every game is it's either every day or every second day. There's not a lot of time. So he doesn't have a lot of time to make big changes. And quite frankly, he said he's not going to. That he's going to make small tweaks work with the players, build their confidence, and slowly make the changes he needs. And it's not going to happen overnight. So it's two games in, and everybody's pissed off. Okay. <laughs> changes are being made, and if you can't see that, then go learn some hockey. I mean, that might be a little harsh. I realize people that are still complaining, they know hockey, I get it. But I mean, if you can't see that changes are being made, and things are happening, and they got better in that second game, then I don't know. This is why we can't have elite players here. We can't. Why would players want to come here and play when they know that if they have a bad game or a slump, they're going to be chased out of town, pretty much. They don't want to get shit on if they have a bad game or go into a slump. Can you blame them? Because I can't. Look what's happening with Carey Price right now. Do you see the, uh, the cartoon in the French newspaper? Uh, it's got him back to the... Yeah, to, he's facing his net. And... On his back, where it says price, they've written over, and they put a D at the end of his name, so overpriced. You know, we chased Patrick Waugh out of this town. Now, there's a, you could argue that he was probably going to get traded in Savard. That was a But we chased him out, um, almost did one year, and maybe it was contributing a lot to the fact that he was thinking about wanting to be traded on the day of that game... That caused all the trouble, and the reason for that is from fans coming down on him for bad games or things like that. I mean, they're not perfect. Okay, on the subject of price and on the subject of um, Jack Eichel, because now the talk for trading Jack Eichel, now I've done a video on this, and um, sure, I love Jack Eichel as a player. I think he'd be great here, but at what cost? This is the problem I don't think people think about, right? At what cost is it, going to, is it going to be to get Jack Eichel? So it's going to cost you Nick Suzuki. And if it's not Nick Suzuki and a draft pick and a this and a that, it's uh, KK and Caulfield and a draft pick and that. And maybe Norland, it's going to cost you a lot. Now, there's talk that his price is going down because of how bad he's playing, but that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. His price is not going to go down. He's 24 years old. He's not an older player. 
Even if he's having a bad year, he's 24. He's going to have great years to come. So what is it going to cost you? And is it worth it at that point? So I, I wrote this concerning Price and Eichel. If Price doesn't get his shit together right now, then it doesn't matter who we trade for and who we bring in. If he doesn't get it together, you can't trade, you can't trade him. And getting an Eichel won't make your team better because of who you're going to have to give up, right? It's not going to make you any better because now you've got other holes. If Price is still playing like shit, Jack Eichel's not going to make the difference. Now you can say moving forward, it'd be a different story. I get that. But I know the only reason people are talking about it right now really is because of what's happening right now. It's panic. The panic button's being pressed. So in my, my opinion, if he gets it together... That's price I'm talking about. This team has the superstar it was built around. And things will will be where they should be. Right? If Price is playing good, a lot of these games we've lost won't have been losses. And this wouldn't be nearly what it looks like. So a lot of this is, a, is on Price. Yes. But all we need is Price to come back. And why would Price be... Apparently he's, he's going to be starting against Ottawa. Uh, it looks like that in practice. He's in he's the uh, in the starters net, I guess. And um, why would that be? Because here's my reasoning: If Montreal is going to go anywhere, if you if you have expectations of Montreal being a contender right now, but this is all gone to shit and all that, but you think that they could be a contender? Well, they're not going to be without Price, right? I'm sorry, Jake Allen is not taking you to a Stanley Cup. Jake Allen's going to help you get there. Without a doubt, he's going to help you get there. But Jake Allen isn't the guy that's going to win you the Cup in the playoffs. Let's face facts. It's not like he's a rookie and you don't know. He's got a long career. We know what he's like and what he is, and he's a backup goalie. And Ducharme knows that if he doesn't get Price going, they don't have a hope in hell. And that's To me, that's how I see it. So, why is Price probably starting against Ottawa? Because Ducharme needs him to get going. And he needs to, he needs to get him going by, you know what? You get thrown off the horse, you know the saying. You get thrown off the horse, you got to get right back up on this, in the saddle. It, that's, the, that's what this is. To get his confidence back, he needs to play. He's already playing less games than he's used to. So, taking him away from more games isn't going to help. Do I really think, though, against Ottawa, would I really like Price to be the guy in that? Not really. I kind of really want, I've said it, I would like to see Allen. But I get the reasoning that it would be because he needs to get them going. As far as line changes, because the lines are pretty much out in practice for today, um, there's not a lot of change there. And the coach hasn't been shy about saying why. He wants these guys to get going, not on their own. He doesn't have a lot of time to make big changes and to big, make big um, strategy changes and stuff like that. Not big ones. So he needs them to get going like they were at the beginning of the season. And they were when they were clicking. It was great. Everything was great. His job is to make tweaks and to get their confidence back and to motivate them right now. And to make these little changes going forward and eventually getting to be where they want to be. But he doesn't have the time to make big changes going forward. And um, Scotian Canadian, if you don't watch Scotian Canadian, you should. Um, he's on YouTube. He does podcasts. He's a great guy, Matt, and he's knowledgeable. You should go and watch him and subscribe to him. Uh, he made a really good point in that part of what Ducharme has to do is build one-on-one -on -one relationships you could say well he's been here two years yeah but not in this capacity it's all new now he has to build new relationships with these guys as the head coach by making these wholesale not maybe not wholesale but making these huge changes lines dropping guys from line to, you know, like that he's gonna piss guys off and not build such good relationships and that's not gonna look good going forward and that's why he's doing what he's doing so you could say, well, you can't be a prisoner to the guys. It's not exactly it. He needs these guys to work with him. It's a new day and age. Back in my day, it'd be no problem. Make the changes like that. No one's going to, you know, so the guys, the players are mad. So what? It's not like that today. The athlete is different. It's a different kind of athlete. You got to coddle them a little bit. 
You know, this is the way it is. So this is what the game he's playing. And in the meantime, we're giving him shit after two games for not being good enough. I don't know. I don't get it. Here, I wrote this. If you can't give a new coach more than two games, two games before we start shitting on him, what does that say about us? As us. Nothing good, I can tell you that. Nothing good. Nothing good. Panic is what it says. It says panic. We're pa panicking as fans. But it's a damn good thing he's not. And the team isn't. Because you got to give them as a minimum five games before you're going to shit all over them in any kind of capacity. That's my opinion. Remember this. This is an opinion show. This is all about my opinion. That's my opinion. I believe you got to give them at least five games. And if things are looking good but they're not perfect, after five games you got to give them some more because things are looking good. And I could say, second game in, things are starting to look up already. So that's a good sign that in the second game in, he's already the team played better. They're starting to play. You can see what he's going for. And you can see, give it some time. It's going to get there. And I'm not talking half a season. I said five games, five games, not five games, five games. So that's what I'm talking about. Put yourself in Coach Dom's shoes. It's been less than a week. As a matter of fact, I think this is day six. And people already want him replaced. So do you think five or six days would be enough for you? Person listening, out there watching. To turn this team around. Do you think you could do it in five, six days? With limited practice time that's available? Really? Do you think you could? Think about it this way. You take a new job where you're supposed to come in and kind of fix things up in the department that you've been hired to do. You know, make a little bit of, you know, change. Just make morale better. Just do those kind of same things. Um, and you get in there, you're two days into your job and they come down on you and say, you know what? You're not working fast enough. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. You're gone. Would you not be like, what? Uh, you're going to give me some time to do something? It's the same situation here. He's had two games. Six days now. So four four days in the, at the last game? How do you expect that to be? That it's going to what? Boom. Habs are better. Habs are a contender. Not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And if you think it is, it's kind of ridiculous. All right. My rant on that bandwagon jumpers that's what we all are if we are coming down on this guy like that if we are even coming down on the players um, that might not have been playing great before if you're coming down on those guys now you're a bandwagon jumper give them some time I mean, I think your bandwagon jumpers are getting tired. You're not tired. You're getting in good shape, though. Your legs are getting strong from all that jumping on, jumping off, that kind of stuff. You get it right. Jumping on, jumping off. You, oh, you on in video, you saw it. Guys on podcast, you don't know why I'm laughing at myself for that. Um, <laughs> I wrote here also, oh, do you think it would magically get better? Lucky Charms, magically delicious. It's not. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Give it a few games or go find another team to cheer for. That's all I can say. If you're not willing to give this team and this new coach, after being so excited for him when he first, you know, the first game, if you're not willing to give him five games before you can really even begin to start saying stuff, I don't know. I don't know. Go cheer somewhere else. Referees. It's quite clear now. Refs effing suck point final that's a french saying point final they suck across the board now i'm not just saying in montreal because i'm seeing complaints from every pretty much every fan base every city saying how bad the refs are but in particular montreal you cannot tell me and this is a case in point to say how bad it's gotten jeff petrie second period He's skating to the center of the ice. I don't know if it's the neutral zone right around his blue line. His back is turned. Guy bumps into him. And that's interference? I, 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 I don't have the words. <laughs> I can go for a half hour. I, 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 I don't know. What the hell is that kind of a call? 
So that's a case in point. A call like that, if a ref's calling that on a team, they've got a bias against that team. I mean, convince me not. I kind of thought it was a soft call. The next one that led to a goal, the tripping call on Ehlers, to me that was a bit soft, um, and it led to a goal. Um, the goalie interference. What is goalie? Inter what is goalie interference? Does anybody out there listening on the podcast or watching on the video? Do you know what goalie interference is? I know you can read the rule. We can all read the rule, <laughs> but the way they're calling it. Does anybody know what they're doing? I don't think so, because one time it's goalie interference, the next time it's not. One time it isn't, the next time it is. Now, I've seen examples that people are using. There's some that are obviously, okay, listen, that goal was good or no, that wasn't a good goal. I get that, but there are so many bad ones that are clearly either not goaltender interference and the goal should have counted or clearly was goaltender interference and the goal shouldn't have counted. And I don't think the refs know exactly what it is and that clearly the fans don't. Because I've seen many where I go, well, if that was a goal, then the one they just called back on Montreal was a goal, or vice versa, and I don't get it. I don't get it. So what the fucking hell is up with the refing this year? I know refing, we always complain, we'll always complain about refs, but it is particularly horrible this year. It is ruining the product this year. And if it goes forward like this, refereeing and the rules that they have right now are going to ruin ruin this product and i don't i don't know i just don't get it um i want to talk on um talk about something it's old but you keep seeing it out there suban weber it's up again i don't even know why it's still out there on twitter i just saw something recently about it and i'm really tired of comparing suban and weber Here's what I say. First of all, I was a huge Subban fan when he was here in Montreal. The only two guys I was going to accept them trading him for was uh, Dowdy in L.A. or Weber in Nashville. And they got Weber. And I was okay with that. And I was happy. They are going to trade Subban, at least get a guy like that back. Now look at Subban's career. He had two good years, you'd say, in Nashville. And then his career kind of steadily went downhill to where it is right now, where he needs some good season to revive it. So I don't get what the talk is about whether Subban or Weber, like if we won, Weber has not had that happen to him at all. No drop off of anything. He's had a couple of up peaks in his career. So I don't get where the talk is still about Subban and Weber, that was a horrible trade. Don't get it. What was horrible is just the length of contract that Weber has. Montreal didn't sign it with them, with him. I get that. It's horrible, the length of time. And that's the only problem I have. But if you compare the two defensemen, Subban's career went downhill two, maybe three years after this deal. Which means, and it has to be two because it's not that long, the deal. So the last three years or so, Subban's straight downhill, and how do you compare the two at, at all? So I don't know I don't know why that's still out there. That's my thoughts on it. I got here Jake Allen. This was before they're announcing that he's going to, it's probably going to be Price uh, versus Ottawa. Allen has the hot hand and should play more. Um, more, what, what did I write here? The Price got his game back. Oh, more till. I thought it was the... Uh, my writing is bad sometimes. Yeah, uh, Allen should play more till Price gets his game back. Um, he left it somewhere. I don't know where. I hope he finds it. Uh, I wonder if he looked in his garage. But seriously, he, he, that's a good argument, right? Allen's the hot hand right now. Is Allen going to win us a cup? I don't, I don't think you want to go and say, okay, Allen's going to be the guy all the way, right? If, we're gonna, if we make it that far. You're not. You're going to win a price. You're going to win a cup with a guy like Price, a goalie of that caliber who can play that many games in a row and not 
have problems. Allen does have problems when he's got to be the starter for that length of time. It's not his thing. He's the backup. He's going to get you there along with, you know, your main guy. But Price has to be the guy. But I kind of think, you know, I would like to see Allen start in Ottawa. But, I, I mean, I understand um, why it isn't. Because, you know, he feels that he's got to get Price there and that's the way to do it. I know we talked about it earlier. But I just had written this down. But in my, in my view... You know, I can't, and I think I've said it either in a live stream or a video that you know you might want to look and say, well, think of it as Price is going to be injured for three games, even though he'll sit on the bench to be your backup. Um, think of it that way. Give Allen, you know, that, and then, you know, go with that. Go with Price again from there. Let him have a little time. But it's clear that uh, Ducharme needs him back in the saddle now, and he needs him to be good once he's in the saddle. And I think that's what's happening here. Okay, one page down. Uh, I think two pages down. Two pages down. That brings us to the uh, new poem. I wrote a new poem. How are we doing in time? A little more than I wanted, but it's a podcast. We're almost done. New poem. This has. I wrote this before the last live stream. I think it still kind of qualifies for still being relevant right now. Okay, here we go. These Montreal Habs, who I've loved since I'm eight... Um, have changed so much since then, but to me, they're still great. This once winningest team in the whole NHL and the only team that I've cheered for. Just thinking about them makes my heart swell. And tonight, I'm lifting my beer for. A coaching change we needed this week, so they fired coaches Julian and Muller. A weak and boring style they were playing, and it couldn't have been any duller. So the new guy comes in, named Ducharme Dom, but it doesn't look like much changed. And when they lose 6-3, like a nuclear bomb, the fans, they get deranged. Just deranged, that's the only word. <laughs> Fire the new coach, the GM, trade away half of the team, cried almost everyone in the room. Are you serious, I said during my stream? What's with all this gloom and doom? Give it some time, a few games or more. Did you expect it to change overnight? They'll soon come around and be mopping the floor with the Leafs, Oilers, Sens, Flames, Jets, and, and Nucks, right? Just a little small poem. All right, now we get to the question and answer portion of this video and podcast segment. And I'm going to start out with a question from Yanni Yonkari. And I, this is a little tongue-in-cheek. Uh, how many Finns are too many? He's from Finland. How many Finns are too many? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think we have too many. If you mean that they could use some more, you know what? It's not a question of where you come from. It's a question of your talent level. So, um, yeah. If it's because there was um, criticism about the Finns, well, that's just dumb. So, I don't buy into that. So, I don't know. As many as you need. How's that? No, that's as many, that's, a, that's the good amount. Um, but I don't know the answer to that. From Shamir Ravji, who has been on the podcast before. Uh, so uh, Shamir asks, do you think the Habs end up with a losing record versus Sens this season? And this is an apropos question since tomorrow, day after I'm filming this, is uh, we're playing the Sens at home for a rematch. And... Um, I think it's a distinct possibility if Montreal can't turn it around against the Sens or the Sens just, you know, there's a couple teams they seem to be wanting to be spoilers against. And if Montreal's that team, yeah, I think it's a distinct possibility. We could. Sens could be our Detroit from last season where we couldn't win a game against them. We'll win because there's a lot of games, but I think we're going to need to win the next three, four, and maybe the rest of the games against them. But yeah, I think there's a distinct possibility. From Samuel Chevary, do you think Montreal makes the conference finals? The way they're playing now, no. Do I think they still can? Yes. Yeah, I think they still can. Um, they make the playoffs. I think they definitely can still make the playoffs. And that's all it takes. You get into the playoffs and you get hot. Your goalie's hot. That's all it takes. And you can win the, both rounds and you, you get to the, the conference finals. So, yes, I think they can still do it. Do I think they will necessarily? No, I don't think they necessarily will, but I think they definitely can. 
Jonathan Gauthier, when will Caulfield join the Habs? That's very timely as well, too, because I think they are, in Wisconsin, on the Badgers, his NCAA team, they are at the playoff por uh, portion right now, I do believe. And uh, if not, they're almost there. I think that we could see Caulfield, and the way he's been playing, I think we will see him. Um, I think as early as the end of this month. I'm filming this on March 1st. I think as early. Now, that doesn't mean it'll be that early, but it depends how long he goes in the playoffs there. Then he's definitely signing an ELC and coming up. Does he go to Laval? Does he go to Montreal? I think he comes to Montreal for at least a few games. And if he does well, he stays. If he doesn't, he goes to Laval. But I think that could happen as early as three, three and a half weeks from filming of this video. So there you go. That's everything. There's my uh, segment and uh, and my uh, video for the uh, for the for the, the uh, Talking Habs channel. Can't get the words out now. So I want to thank everybody for the um, listening to the podcast, for watching the video. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. It ran, ran a little longer than I thought. So I'm going to sign off for the podcast first. So everybody all listening to the podcast, we'll be right back to close it all out. Uh, on the next segment and uh, I'll speak to you guys then just hang on a sec so let me close that out there we go so it's back with just you guys and I can move the microphone away so I hope you guys enjoyed that I might make this more of a regular thing doing one segment of my podcast you know a couple times a month where I will film it and you guys can see what it's like I guess when I film it and it makes a video so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you did let me know what you thought about my my opinions in uh, the in the comment section i mean yeah let me know what you thought um down there and if you are new to the channel or you have not subscribed yet please do that subscribe ring that notifications bell that's going to get you your daily fix of blue blah rouge right here at talking habs thank you for watching everybody um stay safe out there and uh go habs go on the next game we'll beat the sends uh <laughs> peace out y'all see you next video have a great one. Bye, everybody.